What's going on guys? Um, ben McCann here. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a different uh, video today. I'm um, doing some saltwater stuff. Um, I woke up pretty late. In the summertime there's not much going around bass fishing um, where I live. Um, and my bass fishing tournaments wind down. So I actually started my tournament fishing stuff in saltwater and whatnot. So we were out on the beach the other day um, doing a little viz check for some spear fishing stuff and I saw a bunch of nice snooks. So I'm going to do a little snook fishing video. Um, sight fishing on the beach for big snook um, and I'm going to kind of show you guys the ins and outs of what you would need to do that or um, you know at least what I use to, to go do that kind of stuff. I used to do it all the time and I used to fish a bunch of saltwater tournaments so some of the basics I'm just going to show you guys you know some stuff that might help you out there. Um, as far as not getting sunburn goes a buff and some sort of a good SPF like hooded shirt or a regular um, shirt is great. Um, other than that, it's pretty simple what you need. Pretty much anybody can go do it. Um, this is a 12 foot net. You can use any old cast net. Um, the easiest way to catch big snook out on the beach is live bait. So 12 foot net for me is um, crucial. I'm just gonna bring one setup today. Um, it's a, you, you, what you're gonna want is a light, some sort of a light um, spinning outfit. It's got 20 pound braid on it, 20 pound leader. Um, the water on the beach in the summertime is typically, as long as it's not super silted from wind or waves, is typically pretty clear. So you're gonna want lighter leader than you would normally if you're fishing you know, around docks or whatever. So I got 20 pound leader, 20 pound braid, um, a small 3000 uh, size Daiwa reel there, and then I'm just fishing it on a Powell Endurance rod. Um, outside of those two things, you want some sort of a small tackle bag. Um, this is just a small fly fishing bag that I've repurposed to, to use for snook stuff. Um, I've got a, a dry box here just loaded with different types of hooks and then just a few more extra packages of hooks in here, own, uh, owners and some gamagatsus. Um, you're going to want multiple hook options size wise, wire thickness wise, um, and then typically you're going to want a couple different types of leaders, maybe 20 and 30 pounds, a good idea to keep with you. Sometimes even lighter, um, but once you get lighter you're kind of messing up your chances at actually landing um, big snook if you have So I got 20 and 30 pound here. Um, and then I just got some simple odds and ends, pliers, whatnot, um, if you hook a fish deep or you want to cut some stuff off. Um, I got lighters if I ever want to tie an FG or something like that and burn the ends. Super glue, you never know if you need super glue or not. Super glue is awesome just to fix things. Um, sometimes you can use it to patch up FG knots if you don't feel like retying. Um, but outside of that, that's pretty much all you really need to go out there. Um, just a light spinning outfit, some sort of a good sun, sunwear to cover up, good polarized glasses, that's a huge key because you are sight fishing. Um, a net, some sort of a net to catch bait. You can even catch them from like a sabiki if you put out like little uh, sand fleas, if you catch sand fleas in the sand. You could cast those out and um, catch whiting, but some of the best baits to use for snook off the beach. Um, mullet, at least where I live, mullet whiting, pinfish, and croakers, um, sometimes sand perch, are kind of the big four or five baits you're gonna wanna use. Um, you can use like greenbacks and stuff like that if you can get a hold on them uh, of them off the beach. The only thing is you're gonna catch smaller snook. So if you're targeting big snook, you're gonna want bigger baits, um, especially if you're fishing around school, like schools of snook, just because if you pitch out a little bait, you're gonna catch a small one before you're gonna catch a big one. And so you just up your chances uh, fishing with a little bigger bait. So whiting, croakers, pinfish, mullet, those are all great. Um, the only downside, I'll give you kind of the, the pros and cons to each bait. A mullet, a mullet's hardy, so really great bait, so you can walk the beach um, for however you know, long you want without having it die. Um, the only problem with a mullet is it can outrun a lot of snook, unless the snook's pretty aggressive. So if you cast it and you go to reel it up to a pot of snook and it doesn't like it, it can outrun those snook, especially if they're not, you know, if the snook aren't hot, it can outrun them the majority of the time. So great bait, really hardy, but it can outrun big snook. And so just keep that in mind, you know, snook are hot in the summertime, all fish are kind of lethargic. So if you're bringing some big bait past them like that and they're not really amped up to go eat it, they'll let it pass on by. So great bait to walk the beach with, but it can be hit or miss sometimes. Um, pinfish are great. The only downside to pinfish is if you're fishing for like mid 30 class snook and you got a big pinfish, um, sometimes they, they'll have a little bit of a hard time eating them or if you're fishing for like high 20 inch, low 30 inch snook, um, sometimes they'll have a, a little bit of a difficulty actually engulfing the bait. So there's things you can do to combat that, to slow a mullet down or get um, snook to actually engulf a pinfish. You can cut spines off pinfish. You can cut the tail shorter on a mullet so it doesn't have a, as much power and propulsion in the water and they can track it down and eat it better. 
Um, whiting, whiting are absolutely killer. Those are all along the beach. They're really slender, really easy for a snook to uh, eat. The only downside of that is they die pretty easily. So casting them, um, just reeling them around, too much movement, too much smacking on the water for a, white, uh, a whiting can kill it. But whiting are awesome snook bait. I've hooked some giant snook on the beach on whiting. Um, croakers are awesome. The only downside of croakers is they can, is they can die. Um, and then sand perch, sand perch just die easily as well. And sometimes they're a little difficult for snook to eat them. Um, but with that in mind, you want those several hook options because you can you can swap through hook sizes. So depending on what bait you end up catching, you don't want to catch a big bait and only have you know a size four or a size two or a size one hook um, because you're not going to get enough hook bite in the, in the mouth of the snook. But that's just kind of a quick rundown. Um, that's what I go look for. So I'm going to head out there first, um, and then also another big key to um, and something you'll need. I'm going to go pick it up at Ace. Um, it's like a wicker basket, some sort of a wading pen with a weight so you can catch your bait put it in the wading pen and then leave it a little bit off of where the waves are crashing so they can stay alive and then you can kind of use that as your refill so you can pick up a bait from your wading pen wait around and then come back to your wading pen um, or tie it off to you if you stay in the water i personally like to just keep my bait in the wading pen um, go back up on the beach walk it down the beach so i can see better i have a little bit more of an elevated position um, but that's kind of the, the quick rundown um, what you need um, just some quick intel and stuff I've learned over the years. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go to Ace, we're gonna go grab a, a waiting pen and uh, make sure we have a lead with us to, to, to leave it off the beach and then we are gonna go get out there. It is a little windy today, so it might be um, a little too wavy for us. So we'll see about that. Uh, typically you don't want a very wavy day if you're sight fishing just because you can't see fish very easily and it silts up the water. So catching bait, um, actually spotting the snook and whatnot can be difficult. Um, but if you're fishing in areas where you know that it's real common for snook to sit so on a beach when snook are cruising um common places they're going to sit is a pothole some sort of a trough um you'll see them cruise just up and down sandbar sometimes um but like rocks sandbars or rocks you know some sort of a, a trough uh, a pothole anything like that though they're more common to, to set up in so we're going to go try and fish around like a rock pile today um that we actually saw a bunch of good snook off of yesterday some kind of pushing that 40 inch mark so we're gonna go give that a go but um we're gonna go get out there and um hopefully show you a thing or two that's the key right there we're gonna head on out it might be hard to hook up with this big of a bait but we're gonna give it a go If you can find the pod of them, which I'm trying to get my eyes on them, it's a little deep. But if you can get your eyes on them and just let it soak around them, you're kind of just jonesing to get bit, but you gotta find them first. So there's there's a giant pod right here. I'm gonna pitch our bait past them. Bring it through slowly and hopefully they'll actually, one of the big ones will come after it and grab it. Kind of see them, a big dark spot. I think we might actually be on. We're on right now. He's right there. <laughs> We're gonna let him swim for a second. He's literally right there. I got that fish. We got him. Oh, he spit it. <laughs> oh, we're eight again. That big guy ate it. This guy over here. There we go. Spit it again. My hook is a little too small for him. This one actually got double hooked. So that's common. Sometimes you get double hooked like that. Had two eats and they both bent over 30. Um, my hook is just a little bit too small, and this is my only setup I have for this. I sold all my other tackle, but this is literally a bass rod. <laughs> it's a shaky head rod and floating worm rod, so we're giving it a go, but we don't quite have enough power to hook up. See if we can get one over there to commit to it just one more time. He's pretty 
worn out, this little guy. I'm on, and my, my, my rod is messed up. <laughs> I gotta fix it. Again, we're gonna hope I don't get tangled this time. Jake! Jake! And it broke. That sucks. There we go. There's my line. We're hand lining one right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm hand lining and my line broke. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh. Oh, chill, bro. You're on my finger. You're on my finger. Okay. It's wrapped on my freaking finger. Yeah, it's like 30 something. Golly. It's wrapped, line's wrapped. Okay, there we go. I know there's a jillion of them. Come up to the beach. I've hooked three. This guy's still on hand line. Chill, bro. <laughs> So obviously the one I catch is on freaking hand line. About a 30 something incher. About 30. Right on the dot. Chill brusky. Chill. So, yeah. So he's about 30 on the dot. Nice fatty on the hand line. Hooked him on the rod. My line broke on the cast. It got eight. I tried to retie. And then, yeah. That's kind of how you do it. Not really. All right, so what happened there was I made my cast. I had a wind knot, so it got wrapped around my guide. Uh, but when it got wrapped around my guide, my line broke. Um, and then I was kind of holding it, trying to retie and get my rod set up. And while I was doing that, it got eight. Um, and so then I tried to retie, set the hook, my line broke again. My knot broke, so I tied it too quick, it broke. And then I just went to look for my line, found it with my rod tip, because I had like 40 feet of line out. And then grabbed my line to hand line it. Um, the reason I'm losing so many fish is I got such a light action rod. Um, the hook's so dense. I mean, it's a bass rod. Uh, it's a great rod, it's just for bass. So it's the wrong action. A little too light. I had like four bites. Sure it's center. It is. Um, I had like four bites. This one's probably 30, right on 30, maybe like 31 or something. The first one and two were bigger. Um, all the other ones I hooked, I think, were bigger than this one, but he's still pretty nice. So we're gonna let him go. Go back, get retied, put a new bait on, and then get back to it. Nice steady. See you later. So the pod's all around right here. What? I'm talking to the camera. Um, the pod's all around over there. You can still see mine swimming back. The pod's all around over here. When you hook some, they break up. So someone over there, someone over here, uh, whenever they get disturbed a little bit. But the chop's kind of helping them eat pretty good because they were absolutely munching that big whiting. Um, and that whiting's heart way, was way more hardy than, than most whiting are because I hooked like three or four fish on that. Um, and it was still alive and still getting bit. So I'm gonna go get uh, retied again. Um, 
probably gonna put like 30 on because they're eating well. That hook's just a little too thick for this rod and the bait size, so Jake's pitching out. He's gonna try and hook a big one here, but we're gonna get back to it. All right, so we threw the net again for a bit. We couldn't get any uh, more big whiting, but we did get a bunch. Jake's actually hooked up on a really nice one over there. <laughs> um, we did get a bunch of these little guys. Broke off. Jake hooked a giant on the little old sand perch. So we're tossing sand perch now. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you gotta loosen up a little bit. Oh, I did loosen. Oh, well. We're back to, back to fishing. Bro, Jake. I got the big one. Jake, I got the big one. Oh, golly. Listen to that reel. <laughs> that big one was crossing around all over the place. It just picked up. On that Powell Endurance, baby. Getting smoked. <laughs> All right, we gotta keep mad at these rocks. They only got 20 pound. Just gotta keep them up the rocks. Smoking this reel. It's bigger than that other one, I think. Thump the little old sand perch. This is solo cruiser. Don't go through, hey, Jake, that whole trough, they're using that trough. So don't go all through it. Just cross when you do it. He's hanging out right over by those rocks. I'm doing my best to keep him out, but being a butthead. He's like in those rocks, golly. I got a lot of pressure on this fish right now. He's smoking me. He's over. He's hugging those rocks, dude. What? He's hugging those rocks. Look at him. See him? He's on the surface. It's like 34, I think. Mid 30s. On the little 20 pound setup, little bass setup. There she is. Gonna try and keep from fraying her off now that she's out in the open. Look at that, that's a fat snook. There she is. That's a fatty, Jake. It might be like 36 ish. Look at all these whiting. Just gotta not break her off, so we're gonna loosen up now that she's out in the open. So, little extra. There you go. Just gotta keep her off rocks. And work her to the beach. You can see her kind of out there in the surf right over here. It's a fatty. Big old head shake. So we just drop line size, drop hook uh, thickness and size to get a better hookup ratio. Now we're about to land it real quick. Probably 33, maybe 34. What up? What up, big girl? What you doing? What you doing? Right there. How you do it? Nice ready snook. On that power endurance. That'll do. Alright. So that's number two. Nice fat one there. Make sure it's centered nice. It uh, is. He's probably about 32, maybe 33. A little bit there in the other one. We dropped that hook size here. Drop that hook size. You can see the, the hookup penetration is much better. Um, on that little power endurance bass rod. Fish and 20 pound leader. We're gonna get some uh, 
sticks on the big cam. That's a Gamagatsu hook. That's the same uh, hook I used for a wacky rig. But a money little hook, nice fat snook. That's how you do it. Big old fatty snook there. Just took her picture, let her go. And that's how you do it. See you later, big mama. So you see, all I did was took him through the, the hard cartilage part on his nose there. And then he's all good to go. We found the school again. They're way up on that flat now. Look at them all. Big stout one. Monster. Small ones are over there. There's some big ones out here. What? Back up a little bit. There's about a million of them over here, but they're all small. The bigger ones are out over there. Little guys are over here. We're on. We were on. That one? Yeah. Not big. No. Just straight out there, Jake. There you go. In the surf, sir, for real on this guy. A little, I don't know, 15 incher, 16 incher. School's repositioned and moved out. The current's getting, uh, the current's coming out. It's an outgoing tide and the water's getting lower. So when it was a little calmer and the water was a little higher, they were up shallow over here. And now that the water's drawed down and it's a little rougher, they're out in the deeper water over here. Couple really nice fat ones over here. Not this one though. We want that guy right there. Not quite the size we're after. Another little 16 incher. There's a big one out there actually. He's far. A big one way over there. We're gonna put this by school and hopefully a big one munches it. We're right over where we need to be right now. There we go. Little guy. Hey, put it out over, see these rocks over here? Put it out by the rocks. Yeah, leave there, chill. A little bit bigger than the last ones, but not big. Not the size we want. Sixteen, eighteen inches, something like that. Hey, buddy. It's like 20 something. Jake's got one. <laughs> Just got a nice little guy. Gotta have to get some more bait here in a second. See, that's all snook. But not the size we want. I get tangled here in a sec. You gotta go over me. What do you mean? Okay. No, I think he's just mean. I don't think he's big. Get his head up here. Come here. 
little bit of a better one, probably about 20 something inches. Not big though. Decent guy. Another little guy. Okay. There's a fat one right here. Come on, wake up, bro. Wake up, dude. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Man, there's a fat one. Well, <laughs> just slapped them. Bunch of perfect size mullet here. Here, come up here. Big school mullet. We're leaving. There's uh, the water dropping. And all these mullet roll through. Look at how many mullet we got. We probably got 30, 40 mullet. One throw, maybe even more. Unreal. Alright, look what we're working with. This is really killer beach bait right there. Money, we got probably 30, 40 we're gonna keep and put it in our drum here. When you put mullet in a in a drum, you have to put something over it or it'll jump out. So we got a shirt here. That we're gonna we're gonna use to keep them all in there. And we're gonna leave them in our pen. Or I hope we get a few more uh, big snuck. You. We're eight. We got hit twice. He's on it. Pop it on it. Oh shoot. There's actually a bunch of them right under. Not anymore. I give him another pass on that hole. Money shot. So one of the things about mullet is they're really good at staying away from the snook. They're fast and they like to swim on the surface instead of the bottom. So unless the snook's really energetic or hungry, or if it's not big enough, it won't be able to get it because the mullet will be too fast for them. There was a good one hanging out behind. 